everyone, here is Natalia. I'm from Brazil. I just came from my YouTube channel, Mipopi, which is the biggest financial literacy channel in the world. And I'm here as an uh, invited person to UN channel. And today I'm going to speak with Guha. So Guha has played a significant role in development of several standards that have found widespread adoption on the web, including RDF, RSS, and schema.org. He's currently a fellow at Google working on data commons. So my first question is, what is that? Sure. <laughs> Would you explain that, please? Yeah. So data is at the heart of so much of um, how we measure our progress, what we have to do next, and so on. Um, we're going to need a lot of insights in order to solve all the problems, and those insights have to come have to be grounded in data. Yeah. Now, fortunately, a lot of the data we need for this is already publicly available. Unfortunately, there's a big difference between the data being publicly available and the data being easily usable by the people who need yeah. to use it. Mm -hmm. The data is distributed across thousands of silos in different formats and schemas. And if every time you had want a question answered, you have to go to a data scientist. Somebody needs to sort of organize this and make it easier to use. And that is what Google's mission is. Mm -hmm. Google has done this for web pages and images and maps and so much. Now we're doing it for data, public data. Mm -hmm. But because this is so important, this is the foundational layer for solving all of these problems. Google has decided to do this in an open fashion. The data is open, the entire software stack is open, everybody can participate. Much more importantly, we are partnering with many, many different world organizations like the UN uh, and many other organizations because these are the entities, these are the people who have deep domain knowledge, who know what the questions to ask, mm -hmm. who know what the actions to be taken now, and so on. And so today we're incredibly proud to have be launching the UN Data Commons, initially it's targeted at the SDGs, which will enable us to better track and then in the next version, uh, include the actual actions that are being in performed in order to solve some of these problems and so that we can get a better idea of what's happening. So Guha, in order so we can understand what you're talking about, would you share with us some KPIs that we can find in this platform? Because we are talking about 17 goals. Mm -hmm. and the 17 goals are, um, when we go deep, we have more than a hundred. Uh, we have thousands of indicators. So for example, if you want to look at something like hunger and better understand, well, we know that there are a large number of people who are still going to be hungry at the rate at which we're going. Yeah. Firstly, you should just be able to ask in English or Spanish or whatever your favorite language is, um, and uh, Portuguese. And, um, and um, so we built using AI a natural language interface. And the answers come back as a set of charts. So for example, you can go discover that hunger, there's a much higher likelihood of women being hungry than men being hungry. We can discover that you know at the rate at which we're going, but even in 2030, there's something like a 300 million child marriages that are going to be taking place, right? And we should be able to discover these things in English. And we can see where there are different levels of actions and, and, and you know, where there's countries in which there's we are doing well, countries where we're doing far behind. And so if you go to the UN SDG, um, UN data, uh, data Commons, mm -hmm. you can answer, you can ask these questions in English okay. today and start discovering and looking for these insights yourself. What was your biggest challenge in order to prepare this platform? Like about talking about data and, and uh, unifying the data, like because what is hungry? What is hungry in the United States? The same hungry that you have in Africa? This is this absolutely, absolutely. So there's two categories of challenges. One is the actual organizing of the data and putting it all into a coherent fashion. And then the other challenge is, even after you've done this, if you give somebody an interface with 4,000 variables, they're lost. Mm -hmm. The second part was to use AI 
to create a natural language interface so that we could just ask in natural language and begin the exploration. So the, those are the two big innovations and two big challenges that we had to overcome. And my last question is about what is a Google Fellow? Oh, uh, it's a position that, you know, I think somewhere 20 or 25 Google Fellows are people who have contributed significantly in um, building Google. And uh, it's a... <laughs> So, I don't know. It's a bad. I don't know. <laughs> so, um, how do you think people who are watching us could make the most valuable use of the platform? Um, become data literate. Start using this platform to understand data, to play with it, to build your own tools with it. There's gajillions of people using this platform in order to create their own websites and you know there's data commons at Stanford at Harvard at one.org and so on those should give you an idea of what now becomes possible with these set of tools now the data is being democratized and made open and easy to use for everybody thank you so much for, you. for your time thank you